I just got a job. It's going to mean a big change for me. I have to leave Egypt, but I'll get to travel, see new things, meet new people. It might just be what the doctor ordered. You see, a very prominent and rich Jewish man heard. You see, a very prominent and rich Jewish man hired me. Me, an Egyptian. He's employed me to be his wife's handmaiden. Ah, this could be the chance of a lifetime. From the moment I laid eyes on this man, Abram, I dreamed of a lavish home with fine furnishings and wonderful edibles. Mmm, yummy, yum, luscious food. Such a man could afford the finer things in life. And even though I would only be a servant, I had heard favorable rumors regarding the kindness of this distinguished man. Abram had great presence. I liked him. But I had no idea what would really be required of me as I worked and lived in his house. Now this man's wife was very fair and beautiful. In fact, there had been stories floating around on my village about Abram's trip to Egypt how he had fooled Pharaoh by telling him that his wife, Sarai, was his sister. Well, that's because she was so good-looking, and Abram feared the Egyptian men would want her. And if they knew he was her husband, they would kill him. So, as a Pharaoh described her to the king, he immediately took her into his own house to be added to his collection of wives, even though she was a Hebrew. It was said that Abram was very well paid for the sake of his supposed sister. But soon the plague hit, and soon the plague hit, everyone in Pharaoh's house became violently ill. When the king found out that this woman was really Abram's wife, he was very angry. What have you done to me, Abram? he exclaimed. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? What was the end of Abram's Egyptian vacation? Pharaoh's men were ordered to send him away, along with Sarai. That's when I got the position, so, of course, I went with them. When I met Abram's wife, I saw that the Egyptian men I knew had not exaggerated. Yes, my new mistress Sarai was indeed a very striking woman. Any female would envy her looks, and she knew it, too. Not that she wasn't a good, kind soul, and I'm sure a very faithful wife. As I assumed my new new duties, things went very well. It was no trouble at all learning what was expected of me, and I rather enjoyed my work. There was only one problem. At first, it seemed minor, but as time went on, it grew worse, a lot worse. Sari, I I got to where she was pretty upset most of the time. Her attitude was bad, you know. She, (laughs) She wanted children. She longed for children. And not having any caused her shame. Heaven knows they tried. The entire household knew they tried. She was always talking about it, moaning and groaning and moping around. But she just could not conceive. Sari, I was desperate, and I knew it, especially since Abram claimed God had told him that his seed wheat would be more than the stars. Can you imagine? And that he would inherit the land. I was really amazed that God would speak to Abram and tell him such things. And Abram questioned how this would be since he was childless. He told God that his only steward, Eliezer of Damascus, was born in his house. And God had Abraham, he would be the father of his own child. But Abram was a very trusting man, and I knew he believed what God had told him. But not Sarai. She was getting older and older, and she just couldn't wait for God's promise to come about. That's what it looked like, looked like to me. Now you would think a woman like Sarai would be satisfied, even if she didn't have children. She had a prominent man for a husband who doted on her, and she was gorgeous. She was rich and lived in luxury. She had servants. She had everything but one. 
She had no control over the situation that plagued her. So finally, she took matters into her own hands, and I was involved. When I found out that my mistress, Sari, had ordered her husband, Abram, to take me as his concubine to bear a son, I was flabbergasted. Wouldn't she be jealous? I would. However, I had always admired Sari and Abram, so it wasn't difficult for me to fulfill her order or to succumb to Abram's embrace. And I had no trouble at all conceiving, no conceiving, no, no trouble at all. I began feeling pretty special. They needed me. And any woman would be proud to be Abram's wife. It was a good feeling. Of course, Sari, I didn't want him to think of me as a wife. She only wanted to Well, I must admit, I didn't hide my happy feelings about being pregnant with Abram's child. It's true. I flaunted that fact in front of Sari whenever I could. Hadn't I listened to her complaints long enough? Didn't I deserve some satisfaction? No longer was I just her Egyptian handmaid. I would provide Abram's heir, not Sarai. I, Hagar, would be the mother of her husband's child. So, maybe I did get a little obnoxious, but not enough for her to do what she did to me. One night I could hear them talking in the other room. Abram, Sarah said, I can't endure that woman, Hagar, anymore. You've got to do something. Oh, Sari, I don't be so hard on her. Hard on her? How would you feel if you were always if you were always being reminded that you weren't able to bear a son for your husband? <laughs> oh, Abram, I don't know what I'm going to do. Surely she is my handmaid, but oh, she has become my worst enemy, filling me with remorse and pain. I'm sorry I ever let this happen. It's all right, my dear. Now you do with her as you see fit. Oh, I knew I was in trouble now. Sari had become irate enough to take serious steps against me. So she told me to get out. How could she do this to me? This whole thing was her idea in the first place. How could she send me away with no place to go? I felt so helpless, and I knew I couldn't. So I left. I just got a job. It's going to mean a big change for me.